Okay, so how do I talk about this thing without completely pointing out the fact that it might screw the entire uh, four pack at Hasbro Pulse? I, I don't think I can. Hey YouTube, what goes on? And welcome to this about action figures, bringing another action figure review. Tonight, taking a closer look at the uh, Marvel Legends Deluxe 2 uh, pack, which is apparently what it's called in the Target system. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say is wow. How in the heck does this come out of freaking nowhere, out of left freaking field? Uh, a lot of us have the Hasbro Pulse uh, four pack uh, with Longshot and Dazzler on pre order uh, for like 140 bucks, and all of a sudden this just shows up at Target unannounced, and the word mojo is not even in the system. I don't know. I don't know how it goes. All I know is it's in my possession. I'm happy to have it. I'm glad to have it. We're going to review it right now. So how in the heck do we even talk about this thing? I just threw it on the scale. It's like almost two pounds. Absolutely insane. How, how does this just show up at Target unannounced? I, I actually feel bad, I guess you could say. You know, kill me in the comments if you want for the Hasbro team and they're good dudes. Um, I don't know how this gets through and suddenly shows up without being announced. Uh, so yeah, before we even get into unboxing this monstrosity, um, there have been other reviews been put out there. People have talked about it. Obviously, the paint job that would be on this is not going to be as good as the one that comes with the Hasbro Pulse uh, four pack, which is going to be the long shot, the Dazzler, uh, the little Wolverine kind of like mini statue dealio, uh, a better well painted mojo, uh, and of course, all the really kind of cool packings you do get. Uh, with those Hasbro Pulse exclusives. So I am in no way advocating people cancel that. Um, if you only want Mojo, you don't want those other items, uh, then I might consider picking this up uh, and then considering your future <laughs> regarding the Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Uh, cards on the table, I did cancel mine. I feel like Longshot will eventually be available on a carded figure, maybe like Retro Wave. I already have a Dazzler. I don't need the one that they put out there. I love all the extra stuff that comes with it. I just, I, I, I just, I don't need it for that price. Uh, also, there's words out there online that Target might have made a mistake pricing this, as it was only like forty two ninety nine, I believe, and Amazon has it up for like fifty two ninety nine, or at least they're going to put it up for that price. Uh, so I would say if you see this at Target, probably pounce on it, grab it. Check it out, see if you like it or not. And if you want the more vibrant colors, keep your Hasbro Pulse exclusive uh, pre-order. I just couldn't do it, but this thing looks fantastic. I know this is a long clip uh, of just this rotating, uh, but we do get the X-Men logo on top. You saw the artwork. This thing is freaking heavy. If this helps anybody, it's so big, I can't even get it down there. There's the barcode. I put it on Instagram if you want a better look at it. Uh, and then again, the bio does read uh, the interdimensional television uh impresario mojo has his sights set on the x-men on his next big stars and he won't take no for an answer also important to note in today's toy climate uh this is a completely plastic uh offering here it's all cardboard and tape basically um this is very similar to the uh, modok figure that we did have released uh, as essentially a build a figure re-release uh, this is a new figure. Uh, there obviously was one earlier, uh, that is much smaller. It's not the same company, blah, blah, blah. Never owned that one. Let's get them out of the box. Take a closer look. Okay, everybody. So I decided to just, uh, not show you the actual, uh, physical unboxing, the cardboard packaging. If you go back to my other reviews, such as the Spider-Man, uh, Renew Your Vows 2 pack, I did show you what it looked like on the inside. Uh, this is just a whole lot of like, wax bags or paper bags of stuff the only thing that's not in a bag uh, is the back piece right here um so lots of pieces with this thing as i said it was very freaking heavy it was like a pound and a half almost two pounds something like that when i threw it on the scale uh so this is a giant build a figure offering for four for 42.99 or whatever the heck it was at target um so let's i don't know just rip it out you know what i'm just gonna tear it all out at once uh then i'll show you on camera what all these pieces look like we'll go through them we'll assemble them we'll do some comparisons so having to use some creative camera angles here to get it on the toy table. There's a lot of pieces to this thing, as you can see. Uh, so you do basically get uh, the kind of stomach piece right here, which people have said is that kind of softer 
uh, plastic or whatever going. It's kind of weird right there. Uh, we do get like the torso piece right here with the mojo, uh, I guess we'll call them boobs, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, we do get uh, the back piece right here. We get two pieces of tubing. Uh, this is like the tail piece in the background that can kind of pew pew, uh, shoot it off. Uh, we get two different head sculpts right there, as you can see. Uh, these look pretty great. So let's flip the light around here, take a closer look. Uh, there is more of the smiling face right there. That looks pretty cool. The, the kind of like jowly chin going on. I think mean, jowly is the word I've heard used in the past for the old builder figure. Uh, and then here is the tongue out with the mouth. I kind of think this is the one I'm going to pose him with. Uh, you kind of get the teeth, the tongue, the sadistic kind of look to Mojo. Um, if you don't know who Mojo is, go watch the X Men animated series. They do a nice job talking about him in those shows, uh, or just kind of look him up online. It's it's a crazy character from like an alternate dimension sort of deal. Uh, and then of course, besides the head pieces, you do get the extra uh, hands right here. As you can see, there are hands already on that piece down there. This is more of a gripping hand right there. Very well done. The nails. Look well done. We flip the light around right there. The nails look very well done on the hand right there. Kind of some liver spots going on, uh, some different bumps and things. And then, of course, you do get the other hand here, which is the pointing finger with the nails. Uh, I personally really like this one. I think this will be the one I probably uh, showcase it with on my shelf. And of course, you do get the articulation. A little bit tight coming out of the box. Be careful right there. But I do like the hand right there. So uh, you do get the altered hands, which is nice. Uh, those are basically the accessories you do get with this. Um, so let's try to like put this Frankenstein monster of a build a figure that came out of nowhere from Target together. Uh, I'll probably struggle, I'll be honest. I know I struggle a little bit with Mojo. Uh, and then we'll do some comparisons and we'll get out of here for the night. I have seen some reviews, as I mentioned earlier. So honestly, before we even assemble it, I want to take a close look at this actual base piece. So underneath right here, you will see uh, we do get these base pieces. I think the original had four from what I saw in different videos. Um, but uh, this will help balance it to actually make it easier. So these aren't actually the things having to balance it, uh, the legs. Underneath some really great mold going on. Considering you won't see this, that actually looks really cool. All the tub uh, tubing and wiring and things like that. Uh, back part, get a little bit of paint right here on that piece, as you can see. Um, so again, more paint with the blue. Uh, and again, I have heard these are very articulated right here. So let's take a moment to pop these things out and around. Um, the first thing I thought when I actually saw Art G's review, he put it out last night, check his review out of it, was that I really wish we would get this sort of articulation uh, on the Iron Spider figure. And then like he literally said it as I was thinking it. So these are, are very well articulated. Uh, you see right here, we get movement right there, uh, movement right here as well, uh, movement here left and right. So a lot of uh, articulation, I guess we're kind of combining articulation here with the aesthetics, but um, they really went the extra mile with this. Um, so I don't know why we didn't get this here. We actually get like grabby hands kind of thing going on, which is awesome. Uh, these are not articulated. These actual like claw pieces, they're just like a soft plastic. Uh, they are molded differently as you can see. Uh, so the base piece is very cool. Um, I might keep these flipped up for the sake of the review for now, just because, um, I need to actually be able to build it and these might get in the way. Uh, and as you saw earlier, which I'll show you again right now, uh, as these are out of the way, we'll balance nicely right there with those pieces underneath. So, um, let's build this guy. What do you say? For the sake of sanity, I did stop the spinner here, the rotating base to put this thing together. Uh, so let's start off here getting the, uh, stomach piece. Um, this will go on the front right here. You can see it just kind of pops right on. Uh, not a whole lot to do with this. Um, I know that some people have said in their reviews, they don't really like the fact of how, um, these pieces right here don't really seem to cut in right. Mine actually line up relatively well, surprisingly, but I would see be careful with that. Uh, but this basically kind of pops right on. Uh, next, we do have to put the torso piece, which does have the arms already attached. Again, this is a pinless figure. You can see no pins here uh, on the articulation of the elbows, which looks pretty great to me. Uh, so let's get that popped on. It's like a square looking hole right there. So it's a square hole on a square hole. Let's see, I'm sorry if it's not quite on camera, so I'm gonna make sure I line it up properly. I think we got it right there. Let's push that down. I've heard there's not a very satisfying pop to this, unfortunately. You kind of just have to hope it's on there. And it feels like, eh, see, it's still not quite on right there for me. So let's see if I can get a little bit more elbow grease to it, a little more pressure. See if it's on, if it'll stay. There we go. I think we got it that time. So again, just be careful applying pressure to get that torso piece the way you want it. Uh, next, I think what I want to do here is go with the head first. A lot of people have been putting that base piece on first. Uh, and my fear with that is with this kind of dumbbell joint going on and kind of be hard to get that piece to fit right. So um, I'm going to go with this head sculpt right there. So we have to pop this piece a little bit forward. Again, there's the hole you can see to get it 
lined up properly. Again, let's see if this works uh, adequately or not. Line it up as best we can, pop it in here. Uh, and again, it just seemed like this was the easiest way to go. A lot of people are putting that back piece on first. Sorry if it's a little bit off camera. Again, you have to kind of struggle to get it on there. Uh, can't quite get mine on the right. Again, starts taking longer than I expected. There we go. I felt that that time pop in there. Um, so that head is very secure right now. So let's put that back on the base. So in the next, we're going to go with this back piece right here. Uh, again, very nice um, sculpt with this. Uh, a lot of people have pointed out how it's cool that all this uh, sculpts on the inside. You're not going to really see that because this is the back piece for Mojo. Uh, the back part, a little bit of paint right there. All the circuitry, the wiring, the tubing, things like that look pretty great. So let's see what we can do with this. So let's pop this guy around to the back side. And we're just going to pop this in. You can see these two pieces right there should pop in to the back. Again, I think the way to do this is put the head in first. There we go. Very satisfying pop. Push it all the way down. Get it all the way in. That worked fine. Um, so we are almost done already building this guy, as you can see. I'm going to raise the camera a little bit because he is starting to get a little bit larger now as you build him out here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so let's turn him back around. Let's pop in this piece right here. You can see not much going on. Kind of a simple piece. It's going to pop into the top. This is what really adds height to the figure. As you can see, I think it's like a nine inch high figure if you count it to the top of this. So let's spin him back around. That looks pretty freaking cool, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the final pieces we have to put on are gonna be these hoses. For these hose pieces, I just wanted to take a second to get recalibrated to fit everything on camera. So you see the top part right there. So I believe that this piece right here, the kind of thicker bottom, is gonna hook into the shoulder. At least that's what I felt was gonna work best. We pop that in right there, push it all the way in. Then we do get this piece pushed into the back. So I feel like they are pretty well placed. And then again, same thing here, the thicker piece right there. We roll them around to the other side, pop this into the shoulder. I'm just gonna apply some pressure to the front of the shoulder to get that piece to go all the way in. And then this piece goes in the back for the tubing and that feels pretty secure. And just like that, there is our friggin' mojo. And this thing is a friggin' monster. Here is our mojo completely assembled. This is awesome. <laughs> the amount of articulation that went into each of these pieces is fantastic. I love they put the base pieces underneath to help with this. Obviously on my shelf, this will be actually flush on the desk with these pieces kind of looking like it's gonna support it, but I don't think these are, these are quite strong enough to do so. Um, if I had to describe the actual kind of color of this, I'd say like a dull yellow. Uh, we're getting that much more vibrant and green colored mojo uh, in that Hasbro Pulse exclusive four pack. So if you want that kind of brighter colored mojo, definitely stick with your pre-order. I'm happy with this. Uh, I've kind of combined the aesthetics and the articulation, which I really tend to do. Uh, so it's kind of following through with that more kind of circuitry here on the back, as you can see on his sides of his blubber on the sides of his stomach. Uh, some more great sculpt on the sides of this right there. Uh, the tongue is uh, a very cool red color. Uh, there's also some paint up here on this piece as it rotates around. Just a lot of great mold on this thing. Um, it's essentially a build a figure we're getting as a deluxe, right? Uh, this also articulates, so you can look at a ball joint, so it kind of does move around all the way around, as you can see. It will spin, uh, so you can do a lot with this. These pieces are a soft plastic, so don't worry about breaking those. Yeah, this thing is cool. It's going to take up so much real estate, though, on your shelf. Um, we will try to do a comparison with the MODOK. Uh, probably won't be able to do that on the rotating base. As you can imagine, they're both big, giant, build a figure size things. Um, but again, just extra things on this. We get kind of the circuitry, a little piece of the metal right there. Here on the shoulder, some more pieces of the metal that are painted. Um, it's, it's, it's a cool looking figure. For uh, $42.99 or whatever it was, a Target, this was a great pickup. Um, I'll tell you what, let's stop the rotating base one more time. Uh, we will check out the articulation on this thing that we haven't checked yet. Uh, then we'll do comparisons and that'll be it. So I've already spoken on articulation for the most part, but I talked about this being able to spin right there on top. Also, it will move around, as you can see. Uh, we do get the pinless elbows. Uh, so these will be double jointed as well. So you can bring the elbow all the way in, as you can see right there. Uh, it does come all the way out. Shoulder, it will rotate, but again, the hoses 
will somewhat have a problem with that. Uh, the hands are large. Uh, they are on the horizontal hinge, as you can see. They will rotate the horizontal. Same thing over on this side, the horizontal hinge going back and forth over here. Obviously, they do rotate all the way around. Uh, not much with the head. I wouldn't mess with this too often. Uh, a little bit of tilt, not a whole lot. Uh, you do get some articulation here out of the torso. So if you want to lead them to one side, you can. Lead them to the other side, you can. Uh, forward, a little bit forward. Let's give them a profile view here. A little bit forward, back all the way into the chair. But again, not a lot of articulation right there. Uh, this piece here also will kind of rotate on the back, as you can see. So that will do that with it. So if you want to get different angles with this piece on top, uh, you can absolutely do that. And again, all the articulation right here uh, in these legs, or if you want to call them spider legs, these are freaking cool. Just one more time showing you that. This will rotate this direction right there. Uh, you also get the articulation point right there. And these also move that direction and they spin. So you get a lot of articulation on these things. And then the front arms, you do get the kind of elbow joint right there. Same thing, they'll go this way. They will rotate a little bit as well. This will rotate all the way around. So again, a lot of articulation on this thing, as you can see. And there's also this piece right there. And these will spin at the end, if you can see that right there. So a lot of articulation on this thing. This is great. We definitely might see some of this used in that future uh, Doc Ock that we heard we might be getting uh, from the Sony-verse um, Spider-Man movie. But this thing is pretty awesome. Let's try to do some comparisons. I probably won't use the rotating base because it's so large. Uh, and then we'll be done for the night. Here is Mojo uh, and all of his Mojo-verse goodness. I did add the, add the pointer finger in. Is that's the one that I like the most? Um, with the pieces actually like you know articulated downward to make it look like he's crawling. Uh, compared with two of the new Marvel Legends, here is the Morph VHS release uh, with the cell shading, which I did review here in the channel. If you want a closer look? Check them out. Uh, and then of course the Marvel Legends controller wave, uh, Quake slash Daisy Johnson. They are popping up at Target, so check those out. You can see this thing is freaking huge. Kind of moving Daisy closer, you can see that her just the size of this thing and of course the stinger being way up here this is a very large large figure here is mojo standing with the brand new uh gi joe classified blue ninja amazon exclusive two pack and again the, the female figure is slightly smaller you can see uh, her head barely reaches the top of his shoulder uh this thing is just gigantic here is mojo standing with the neca tmnt Raphael in disguise from the Raphael in Disguise and Casey Jones NECA 2-pack. Uh, and of course, the big mother fragger Lobo from the uh, McFarland DC Multiverse. Here is Mojo standing with, next to the Marvel Legends MODOK Deluxe release. As you can see, MODOK overall is a lot chunkier, larger figure. Um, he does have that blast effect, which obviously rises and make him a little bit taller. But if you do line up the stinger piece, for lack of a better term, with his head, that's right around nine inches for both. This might be slightly taller. Uh, this was a really great release last year. This is a great follow-up release right here. And again, we're getting Build-A-Figures that we all want for like $43, $42. That's a pretty good deal. Also, a lot of people do tend to ask, you know, why didn't we get this blast effect? Where did I get it from? This is actually from the Cyclops that came with the House of X Powers of 10 Marvel Legends. It plugs right in. It's a great blast effect for Mojo. I'm sorry, for MODOK. That's Mojo. There's your size comparison. And last, but as everybody likes to say, certainly not least, here is our Mojo Marvel Legends Deluxe, kind of a stealth drop Marvel Legend figure, uh, standing with the AEW Unmatched CM Punk and the AEW Jazz Wears Unrivaled Orange Cassidy, freshly squeezed. I kind of feel like he likes orange, he likes yellow, the future version might like green. I'm sure they'll figure it out. Okay, everybody. So final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Deluxe Mojo release. If you can find this thing at Target for the price point that they're charging, I'd say pick it up. I, again, do not want to dissuade anybody from either waiting for their Hasbro Pulse 4-pack exclusive to ship, as the paint will be much uh, better on that figure. I'm sure a lot of us who bought this one might regret canceling it. Uh, but I feel like as far as getting bang for your buck, the target price for this thing right now is great. This is an amazing figure. Hasbro, thank you for giving this to us. I know it kind of snuck out there. We all really, really weren't told about it. Um, again, I'm guessing there was some sort of snafu there between the release of this versus uh, the exclusive on Hasbro Pulse. But this thing is 
friggin' amazing. I'm so happy to purchase it. Zero buyer's remorse. So if you can pick this thing up, I suggest doing it. If you really want a long shot and a dazzler and that little mini Wolverine, uh, along with all the really cool packings, I have to say, nobody's really mentioned it. There's a lot of awesome, cool, just artwork and packaging uh, and packings that do come with that Hasbro Pulse exclusive. So I can totally see people wanting to wait to get that. But for me, just trying to collect on a budget, uh, I really wanted to pick this up. When I saw it, I grabbed it, I wanted it. Um, it's fantastic. So everybody, thank you for watching tonight. If you're new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It is free for you. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps us grow the channel tremendously. Then go ahead and hit that bell for notifications. That way YouTube will actually tell you and notify you of our weekly toy hunts, reviews, and live streams here on the channel. Leave a comment down below, hit that like button. And for daily toy content and daily toy updates, check us out over Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Hey everybody, if you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three P's of the toy hunt. Patience, persistence, but most of all, politeness. Take care, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing all of you at the pegs.